right, everybody. <laughs> Sound like a cow. <laughs> Welcome back to our YouTube. <laughs> Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Victoria. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to our channel, Ino Stranki. Ino Stranki, which we apparently spelled wrong. Yeah, we did. Such is the life of a foreigner. What we are talking about today is how to properly. <laughs> What we're talking about today, if you can tell from our beautiful clothes, is how to properly dress for Russian winter. What do I mean by Russian winter? Not Siberia. I mean specifically in St. Petersburg, which Correct. keep in mind is a bit warmer because we're next to the sea and there's a lot of cars here, so global warming. <clears throat> However, since most Russians live in tall apartment buildings, there are wind tunnels. Yeah. Um, yeah, so St. Petersburg is probably a bit warmer than the rest of Russia. One of my friends told me today in her village it is negative 41. Is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? Celsius. So what is that in Fahrenheit? It's like negative 45 or something. Negative 45. Yeah. Um, I think the coldest day that we've had in St. Petersburg so far has been seven degrees. Er, right. Yeah, seven degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't know how to do Celsius because I'm dumb. So I'll put <clears> it on <throat> the screen here somewhere. So uh, talk to me about your outfit today. Well, if you may have noticed, Lane, I am wearing <laughs> fur. Real fur. Um, in Russia, it's totally acceptable to wear real fur and even fashionable, actually. Um, I've talked about this a lot on my other channel, but this this fur coat is a hand-me-down, so I did not actually buy this fur because I don't support the fur trade on purpose. This real hat, this hat is real and it was sold to me by a woman who told me it was fake and then it was actually real. So, that was that like little tourist market. So. Be careful, they'll lie to you. Um, when you're wearing fur, fur is really warm. I mean, it's fur. Uh, and white fur especially is a bit more expensive than I think brown and black fur. I don't know that because this was given to me and it's like from the 80s, so I have these sweet shoulder pads. But basically, I wear the fur when I want to be super warm or a little bit more fashionable. And then I have like a regular parka, like the one Lane is wearing, for like everyday life. Um, fur is more expensive than these kinds of jackets and they it also draws more attention. So if that's something that you're worried about, then I would say stick to regular parkas, which are totally fine and acceptable. Sure, but also you should provide the names in Russian. Oh, yeah. This is called the shuba in Russian, which actually means sheepskin. Um, and, but they just kind of use that to talk about like all fur coats. I don't know what this is called, probably shaka. Um, and if you want fur in Russian, it's mecha. And I will like put all of those words on the screen in Cyrillic so that you can buy one if you want to. Um, it's pretty easy to find shubas used in English speaking countries, but mm -hmm. it's it's very difficult to find them here. They might be as expensive, if not more expensive, than new ones. This is a very traditional Russian platoc. Mm -hmm. What's it, a platoc, Lane? It's a Russian scarf. You have probably seen them in every stereotype of a Russian person that you know. Correct, yep. Um, even the little nesting dolls usually have platocs on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can buy these at numerous places um, and Renox markets um, at Galleria, which is what? Gal Galleria. Galleria. <laughs> yeah. So you can purchase these and they are very handy because it keeps your hair out of your face because mm -hmm. it is very windy since we are by water. Yeah. Um, so your hair is constantly like in your mouth and gagging you. Yeah. So it's perfect plus it keeps your head warm and also Russian women, and this will be another video, um, have to cover their heads in church. Um, and then I just have a regular parka, but regular parkas, you need to layer it up. <laughs> so even though I have a regular parka, mine has a layer of down in it as yeah. well. So I, I can barely feel much 
Um, also, gloves. Gloves are a necessity. Look at this beautiful gift I got from Vika. Mm -hmm. um, um, gloves are total necessity, especially if you're a foreigner. You need those gloves that you can use your phone with because if you're out walking about, you're gonna be able to you're gonna need to uh, be able to touch the screen yeah for directions I every day I'm like I wish I had some tactile gloves because I have I have three pairs of gloves one of them is like fake leather and one of them is a regular <laughs> thin pair of gloves and then one of them is this like super thick pair of black gloves and none of them are tactile gloves and they really should be because I'm always trying to check when the bus comes uh, or I'm talking to Lane telling her when I'll be home or trying to check if I have enough money on my spare bank card to buy food um, and then I also wanted to say on the topic of layering like most of the kurki that you can buy here will actually have a down layer in them mine doesn't have a second layer like Lane's does so what I usually do is I'll wear a sweater underneath my parka or kurka and then sometimes under that sweater depending on how warm it is I'll have another shirt basically you should have a layer kind of to uh, keep out the ice and wind and then a layer for like to protect you from the actual cold and then another layer just for additional warmth. So I usually have two to three <coughs> layers on, um, but it's not the coldest place in the world. The gloves definitely make a difference though. Like every day I don't have gloves on and I'm in the street, I'm like, I wish I had gloves right now. Um, and then let's talk about bottoms. Um, what do you usually do? Lane's a bit braver than me. I almost always will wear tights or thermal underwear under jeans. I we'll probably start doing that, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. That's that's a really good idea, is to wear tights or thermal underwear. Yeah, basically um, just forget wearing skirts in winter. I still occasionally wear skirts, but I do not like doing it um, unless I am taking a taxi. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people take metro, and it gets windy and cold, and you'll be miserable. Yeah. So it's best to wear something comfortable and warm. We, get sh we should talk about shoes as well. Yeah. I have snowshoes from Sorrel. I have snowshoes too from Kari. <laughs> um, I know Sorrel's kind of expensive. But they're made for snow, and then they also have twice a year, 50% off um, of their snowshoes. And it is life-saving here, because there is ice everywhere. And it's kind of hard to tell where the ice is, because there's a layer of snow over top of the ice. Um, and it's very easy to slip on the ice. In yeah. fact, one of my friend's um, dad's today, he uh, broke his foot in three places <laughs> on yeah. ice. Um, and I wanted to say, lots of Russians will tell you that it's more expensive to buy shoes in Russia than it is in America, which I don't find to be entirely true. Like, I bought my snowshoes here and they probably cost me about $30 USD. Mm -hmm. And they're great, like they're fine. And in the US, I, maybe it depends on the state, because obviously I'm from California and we don't have snow. So snowshoes are a bit more expensive. Um, but it, depending on when you're getting here, I say if you get here in winter, you're gonna wanna come with snowshoes. Mm -hmm. But if you're here, like I was here in the fall, so I kind of had the time to investigate the snowshoes then I would say probably buy them here because they're actually, depending on what state you're from, but if you're like from a southern state like I am, then it's better to buy them here because you're gonna get better quality for less money here. Where I think in the US if you pay more money, you're gonna get like better quality there. Um, and I wanted to say also, and I also wanted to say, make sure that your snowshoes have like a layer of like fur inside mm -hmm. of them. Because also what people don't tell you is that when you walk in the snow, your feet get wet. Um, so it's good to have waterproof snowshoes and, and also having an extra layer inside of them because it will also snow on your feet and then it gets wet. And let's talk about how to protect yourself from the wind. The wind is easily the worst part of Russian winter and it's not that, it hasn't been that windy this past winter, but like when it is windy, you just think, I would literally rather die than be in the street right now because it makes it really difficult to breathe. 
um, and because we are by the sea, the wind is really strong. Like there has never been a light breeze. Mm -hmm. It's always like oh, this wind is gonna knock me over. Mm -hmm. um, so usually what I'll do when it's windy or also always, just in case, it's always good to have it just in case because sometimes it gets windy, is I'll wear a really thick scarf and then wrap it around my neck. And when you're wearing a kurka like this, yeah, exactly like that. Usually I'll put the scarf like under the hood. Mm -hmm. um, so it and stays then, in place. Yeah. Um, and then wrap it around your neck and you can hold it there or whatever to, I guess, like make it easy to breathe <laughs> because yeah, sometimes that cold really hits you and it's very difficult to breathe. So definitely never forget a scarf. Turtlenecks have been a, a huge lifesaver. Layers, layers, layers. Um, it's easy in St. Petersburg to get away with wearing jeans, uh, not so much skirts, but jeans and pants you can easily wear. Like we don't actually need snow pants and stuff, but I would definitely recommend snowshoes and a very warm hat. Okay, and we will leave our links below. I have two other channels, one in English, one in Russian, and we have an Instagram for this channel. And that is a wrap for today. So as usual, paka, 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 paka. Bye. Really hot.